Hello and welcome to episode 101. Not out. Of the Talking Wednesday podcast. Hope this podcast finds you well as always. Dex and Jake joining you here this week. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really, really trying not to make a Fallout Fallout 3 reference because of Vault 101. I've been thinking about this all week. <laughs> it's been like, oh, it's 101 and I'm a nerd. And you would so make that. that reference. How has your week been, mate? Eh, uh, chaotic. So my cooker top finally blew up and it's now been like, right. You know what the really weird thing? You forget how much like cooker hobs are so crucial to cooking kind of thing. Like just doing a pan of pasta. You can't do it. You, well, yeah, that's... It's like pan of pasta, some mash or veg. You just can't do it. So having to use microwave, air fryer, oven. I, I'm ironically, I'm meant to be doing an energy saving thing right now. And I've got two massive lights on, a camera, a computer, a monitor, and a roadcaster going, I don't think we're going to do very well on this one. <laughs> yeah, I think you're in trouble there. But yeah, it's been good. Um, it, it, it was weird because... I had this massive come down from the podcast because after you guys wet left, my body went into massive anxiety fits. Like going, oh. I've, done, I've done way too much. But my body finally went up. After you left, Sarah put me to bed. I literally got put to bed and said, no, you're not doing anything. So it took me about till Wednesday to properly feel normal again. And normal in air quotes because I ain't normal. Um... It, do you remember the, when you were like, oh, we should do these all the time? The, the thing, I still want to do them all the time. I just have to manage my body better. But because I know which way we set the room up, I can do it beforehand, the night before. Uh, also, I'm, I'm gear hunting for a new microphone next month, hopefully. So hopefully it'll sound better, but I probably won't. It will probably won't. I'll, I've got all the gear and no idea, and this man over here will fix it. I'll fix it. It's fine. Because yeah. I might also be buying the same microphone, because yeah. I think it's time. How's your week been? Uh, Oh, he's got to say it. He's got to say it. I found, I found an old clip of you, by the way. It's actually been really busy before. <laughs> what was the clip? We're going to pay for him. Oh, I yeah. was tempted to put it back on the roadcaster. But we can pay for players now, so there's no point. No, it's, it's very true. But I, uh, yeah, I've done a lot this week. I've done too much again, punk. Oh, no. As I don't want to goes. know how much driving you've done. A lot. Because your driving is absurd. It's, yeah, it's, it's the hour. It's just, I've, I've not stopped this week, really. Yeah. I'm going to... I was thinking, I've got a watch along tomorrow. You have. If you are watching this, make sure you stick around tonight for the uh, Dexterity Watch. Um, Wednesday we'll be playing, and I will be watching, watching. with you. Because we have got a game against Cheltenham. Cheltenham. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I'll wait to see your brain would catch up and go, nope. Do you know why I was looking at the document and then I realised we've put all the stats in, uh, but as you always do when you when you put the stats in, you don't put the team in. I don't want to put the team in. <laughs> it just says next match and I've got all the stats that I always pull, but never the team. And I was like... I'm trying to remember because I know we've got some games coming up. Like we've got the Plymouth and Ipswich game coming up as well. I know we've got yeah. a lot. That was last a... minute today. And, and I, I'm, a, I'm really bad at like just copying the stats and then, oh, they'll know what game it is. And then my brain going, and then I go to the document when you, and it's every time I look at you, get looking at the stats and you go, I can see your brain going, who's the team? Punk. You've done it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I used to, I, my, I fill my brain with so much now. Like I used to know this, like yeah. I probably know the fixture list, like the back of my hand. But I was, because I was thinking, I know there's a game before we play the Plymouth and the, the Ipswich run. Yeah. But who are we playing on, on you we know, got tomorrow? Chelsea Fleetwood. Which is good because I need to make all the graphics for it tonight and make sure it's there. But yes, it will be 740 ish on the yeah. Dexterity Box channel. So good. go ahead, uh, youtube.com slash yeah, dexterity yeah, box and let's watch it. No, it has been a while, but... Then again, I think this is the first time in a while we've not had a Tuesday game. It feels weird. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing that. It'll be it'll be good to speak to people live and do that yeah. that way. Memberships are available. The £5 tier has been greatly overhauled. Um, we've also got a new credited member. 
uh, Kabuda Fish is, upgrade, uh, is upgraded to the credited tier, so we'll be um, in the credits for at least the next month. So thank you for that. I'm going to try and shout out people as the upgrade tiers as well, a little bit more on the podcast and things like that. If, But if you don't want me to, I don't also have to do that, so just let me know. But um, it will be obvious if you're on the credited tier, you'll be yep. in the credited tabs. But we... The five pounds here has now got that solo podcast coming in. I will do one this month. Yep. I've got about seven days to figure it out um, because we announced it mid month, and I've, I might as well just start it with me to go on. I will, for anybody in that five pounds here, you will be getting a solo podcast of the Talking Wednesday podcast. As of this month, there is also the other bonuses in there. There's our stickers. There's still a little bit of time in our sticker giveaway. Go and retweet our Talking we- we- uh, Wednesday episode 100 with the hashtag TW100. I've already picked a couple of winners. Um, I'm still gonna 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 select some more so you've still got time if you've not already tweeted that out okay mine, so, got, st- mine got stuck up by soph and dex in the studio and i didn't have a say where it went so I can just no we just went bang. <laughs> <laughs> and they're up um they're up above it's, i think we 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 put them very nice on you an did, angle and they look very good right, very nice on an angle but also my ocd is like this should be great <laughs> they shouldn't though <laughs> i know they should the stickers exactly have a bit yeah. of fun have a bit of fun. I'm down for um, police. Yeah, but thank you so much for watching the episode of uh, talk, uh, 100 of Talking Wednesday. It was so nice to have the reaction to that one. Yeah. So many people coming out and um, wishing us well. It's also, good to be massive this- shout out to you because that was one hell of an edit. Yeah. That was a long wild. edit. and That was wild. When, when, you know, we, <laughs> when, we got, when we got the screenshot in the Discord, I looked at it and went, four hours? Were we read that how long? <laughs> was four and a half, yeah. just, to, just so you know. Um, because I was, I couldn't get that rendered in time. Yeah. I had to delay it. That's got to be your longest video ever on your channel, surely. Yeah, it, it is. It's just cause, because there was different cameras as well. Mm. So we had the camera on Jack and a camera on us, but we had four mics yeah. and we had all of that. It was processing it all. And to make it not look awful, I had to do, I had to do corrections, obviously, and yeah. light balance and stuff like that. And then we had to bring the call sections in and I had to make sure all that. And it's just putting all that together and then having it rendered. Yeah. I did try not- to, when I sent you like the audio stuff to make it so, and I did realize when I sent some of the audio, I felt things wrong. I was like, is he going to understand this? I was like, he's done a hundred episodes. I'll know what this is. I'm used to it. I am <laughs> yeah. very much used to it. But yes, um, anything we have mentioned about the membership tiers that might not be in there. I do need to, I will sort that out by February. That will get up and running by yeah. February. Everything will be up and running by the next month. Um, because I will also say, if you are in the credited tier, you don't just get entered into the draw for like, oh, our exclusive stickers that go out. You will get one if yeah. you're at that tier. You're at least one. You might get a couple. You might get a, you, you know, okay. that sort of thing. And uh, I am thinking of adding something to that top tier that's a little bit more personal for every few months, you're, uh, every nice. couple of months you're at it or whatever. But yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm constantly thinking of things because it's really nice to be able to to get that community and build mm. on it. Sheffield Wednesday, let's get into the Talking Wednesday podcast properly, shall we? Um, but remember, you can leave us reviews. Yep, all help. It's, they, they do help. Um, I'm going to check reviews. Do you want to fill the air with something? Come yeah, on, something random. It's random. Well, one of the random things I had recently is that I was going to the shop and I heard someone shout out of the car, Hey, up, punk! I uh, turned around and went, <laughs> Hi! <laughs> yeah, and, I, I've been, I, I bump into quite a few Wednesday nights now. Yeah, in, it's uh, kind of funny Meadow when Wall you do, but I never know how to react, especially if they're just saying, shouting it out from a car. <laughs> like, okay. It's it's a weird one because you you never really get used to it, do you? Getting recognised, but it's always weird. Yeah, it's always in an awkward time. Like owls in the park, I understand. I'm walking around owls in the park with all Wednesday eyes, so I get it. You're gonna get like bumped into, and somebody sort of ask you questions. But like randomly in a supermarket or just while they're in a car, it's like that odd. I still don't get this. <laughs> I sort of like. Even though, like, there's so many Wednesday fans who don't know what we do, mm. obviously. It's very, very, <laughs> very fitting this week that I've no clue who we are and just think when we when something is shouted into the abyss that, um, who are these? Um, but 
I am very aware that if I go to the ground and I've yeah. got my full Jesus hair down, that there will be people that I see and it I'm like, hello, fault. and I chat. I just realised, it was your fault. You were announcing a new Pope at the ground, weren't you? <sighs> I got people on that, right? I know you did. <laughs> I genuinely was like, can you look out your window, please? <laughs> is, is Hillsborough on fire? And there's obviously something less fun to talk about yeah. with that later on. But yes, there was a rumour going around this week that Hillsborough was on fire. <laughs> so... There was just steam coming from the boiler room. It just showed that under soil heating was working. Yeah, and it was the it was the lights as well. It was the yeah. pitch lights, so it was just to make sure it was all ready for the next day because we've got those and we can afford to run them now. Yeah. But yes, uh, no reviews on that front. But yes, Sheffield Wednesday played Fleetwood this week since we've last seen you. Put talk me through this one, punk. This was a dire. <laughs> this was not a game for the classics at all. Credit to Fleetwood, they came and gave us a game and they could have got something from there for me. But the biggest thing is when we miss two certain players, we have to adapt and play a different style. When you don't have Byers or Bannon in that midfield, we have to have a different style. And we, I still think, and i come to a conclusion, I think Byers, if he stays and signs a new contract, we got the Barry Bannon replacement already in Byers. Because they were both the same age when they came... So Bannon came when he was 26, Bayer came when he was 26, came from difficult things where they were having problems at their old clubs, wanted 13 football, come and got all the love and attention. The, the, the idea of both of them is very similar if you actually look at it. But we miss that person like just getting that pass, like you know where Barry Bannon or Bayer, they don't even need to look up, they just know where to put the ball. And the first in that first half, we played some good football and we got skinned a bit down the uh, left-hand side on Palmer, but it was a really good crossing for Johnson's goal. And it reminds me of goals that he get, did last season. Where he yeah, it was, it was, it was proper there. like, it felt like proper wing play there, wasn't yeah. it? It was like, not like, Wednesday obviously play things through the middle a lot when we've got our midfield players on it. And it was more a case of utilising what... It just shows the depth we've got across the side, yeah. across the team now in terms of we can play a different style. Let's do the wing play. And Palmer's been absolutely... Super, I'm going to use your word, superb <laughs> this uh, this season. And just the, the ball from him there to win us. To, but just to, the little... I was like... The dink, the way yeah. he just got that through with the weight on it and, and, and straight across for... Neymar made sure that got in the top... I will that say got in the I, net. I was like, I he could have hit the it, bar if he weren't careful. When I it was, saw it, I thought he missed it and it hit the back stanchion. I thought he missed it. It's so hard. Um, he got that in his locker, though. He's a good player. And we kept on lining up some long shots and stuff. And then second half, they came out a little bit more prepared for it, but there were times in that second half where Palmer would be looking up and Johnson would be in miles of face and like Barry Bannon a Byers would just hit it there and know it's there but we don't have that kind of it, it, I don't want to say vision but it's that, that not that in, it, it, to just do not use the word creativity no but it's the, th the big thing here and it's I said it so many times Patterson came on and changed yeah. the game again because he does all this like the thing is, if you lose Patterson, say he goes to Hearts, we're going to have the same thing we said when we lost New Hugh. He does all that running that you don't see. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he, he gets in player faces, he winds them up. But credit to Fleetwood, right near the end, they had some really good chances. And one of the things you have to remember about Fleetwood, they go a lot of 90-minute like equalizers or winners when they're away. They have a really good away record. I actually got that wrong when I said it on the podcast. And... They, yeah, was, somebody pulled you yeah, up on it today in the comments. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dawson, cracking save. We get a penalty, 90th, lack of the game. Gregory guys it over the bar, and I'm gutted for him because it would have rounded off a really good display for him. But one of the big things was David Stockdale coaching from the sidelines. Yeah. I, I've got it in me that he's going to be a coach for the club. I've already said he he's either well, going to be a goalkeeping he? coach or Darren Moore going to say, I want you in my back room somewhere. There's something there. Oof. I said back room, shush. 
But That's exactly what, what I was playing <laughs> off of, folk. Carry on. He wants him in that backroom staff to be able to do this because the Instagram post he put with Iortha, like going, great game, because Iortha's had a tough time with injury, and Iortha was immense. And special credit to Akin Femiru. He had an absolutely superb game. And this is the thing where people are conscious about signings. We haven't signed anyone yet. We need probably one or two. And that's it. Yeah. I'm very confident with what Darren Moore's doing. But we got three points. That's the main thing. It closed the gap. You look at the stat, 14 shots, four on target, four corners, uh, nine shots to them, two on target, 53% possession. But we got the job done. This is another one of those games where last year we probably lose. Or yeah. we have to go into it. Because the thing that I noticed is last season we played quite an attacking, offensive football at times. And we would concede a lot of goals. This season, we're not doing that. We're going for like one nils and just trying to ground it out. And if we can get a second, great. But we're trying to ground out results. I mean, is it me or isn't this what Megson did for most of his time at Wednesday? Just ground I just, out I really think in general, results. it's what promotion teams do. Yeah. You can, you can actually feel like a lot of the fan base saying, I, we're not even playing our best and you're still grinding out the results. Yeah. And that is what, teams who get promotion do it's what you want to see it's what i've always wanted to see i will address something yes <laughs> that our our twitter man mr worko Crappy. because we're all boomers not, we, we don't use it i tweet some things but on match days our man says what he sees yep. and he did say Without these two there is zero creativity in that central midfield along with a picture of bannon and Byers. I could see where he was coming from because he was making an observation in the Fleetwood game when we were struggling to be creative in the midfield. Because that tweet, for some reason, ended up in the Wednesday sort of trending area for people who don't follow us and don't know our content, and obviously originally thought it was either you or me who tweeted it, was also a thing of like, oh, well, this is fun because there's a lot of different opinions on this one, clearly. Yes. I would like to add that Jack has gone on a rant recently about how negative our club is. And he is, he's absolutely massively shot himself in the foot here by, for the first time ever, seeming like he's moaning here that we've got no creativity in the midfield. But I That's know what, what he I was meant. getting at in terms of he was watching it and we, had, we didn't have our creative players on the pitch. If no. you lose your best players... Obviously, you're not going to be as good a side. And if you haven't noticed, it's, when we lose our best players, we leave, lose them both at the same time. Yes. I think, you know what, what I looked at that? and Because I was driving for two hours and left, I left, the, I was on a high match well, over. Well, we've won, well, we've ground it out. I was like, we've not played well, but we've ground it out. Cool. I pull up to see over a hundred notifications <laughs> on the Talking Wednesday Twitter. And I'm like, oh God. And I was like, what? What? Oh, because I think, do you know, if you'd have just worded it, like we've really missed these two in our yeah. midfield, it would have gone down better. But I must say a lot of people agree with it. Yeah. I think there were some people that kind of took it in bad faith as well. They were like, they knew what he was getting at and probably tried to play on it a little bit. There were also people who genuinely disagreed. And do you know what? If we were going for an engagement Twitter, that's engagement. Yeah, yes. But we also must say it is quite ironic that we've been preaching about how negative our fan base can be. And then our, on our Twitter... <laughs> It looks like we're Would adding to it negative? on a match day <laughs> ah, when we win. When we win, and because yep. the thing is, I was because uh, because I because when I was sat in my car, I then replied to someone before after like they got home and didn't actually see the time it would put at. Yeah, I think there was that because he was saying it as he saw it, yeah. and it was like. He doesn't get the notifications because he uses the Twitter for Teams thing, you know. Yeah. You know, and he and he would he would he was like, so what's going on? And I was like, just look, <laughs> uh, and I and I went like, because I because because somebody very very much said, I, I I agree with this, but we're winning, so should we really care? And I I replied because this is when I just opened yeah. it to a hundred. I went, no, no, we should not. I will take this every week because I think, and I've been saying for a long time, promotion teams grind out yeah, these performances. They. They take, they can lose their best players and still grind it out, okay? Obviously, they're going to be a worse team. 
they're going to be a worse team in their creative spots if you lose your creative players. But it kind of it this whole thing kind of made me think of a general topic of who do you think the next creative midfield players are for Wednesday? Because obviously Bannon's coming towards retirement age, so I suppose, uh, <laughs> and Byers is probably the man for that. But with Byers picking up injuries, do we need another creative midfield? Is there somebody else in there? Because you probably think do. Because could it could it have been Fizz? I, like, I think Adam has got. When he first uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But again, we've not. I don't know if we've got fitness reliant players in that position. No. Because one thing that was said, and I completely disagree with, well, what about Volks? And I, I, what, I think it was like, what about Volks is not that kind of player. There is no. a difference in midfield player. What was getting at here is the type of creative midfield player. Do you think it's time that we probably bring in an understudy for Bannon Byers? We need to start looking. I, I said it last season. We needed to start looking for the next Bannon. And it's one of those things where I don't want to put us in a situation where we're looking for the next Kieran Westwood. I want this yeah. to be somewhere at the top of Darren Moore's list, like, look for me the next Barry Bannon or the next creative player. Because if we can have it ready, people said, can't Fizz do that role? He's not consistent enough. And he's too attacking going forward. He hasn't got the passing. If you have him as a cam, he's superb. But you, you yeah. don't need a cam. We need a, just a midfielder who can sit there, see it, pass it, and be like, what a ball. And the difference is with Bannon, the most, Bannon will run his legs into the ground, literally, to stop a ball from like going in. And we don't, it's, it, there's a couple of players who we might be able to get free transfers on in the summer, probably, if Darren Moore goes down that route again. But it'll be interesting to see what Darren Moore can do with a little bit extra cash if he gets it. Because the yeah. players out there, Darren Moore can pick up and do quite well with, I think. And, it's interesting because I was uh, speak, I was speaking to Dapper on Sunday and they're about to get a windfall in from the player, Donny sold when it all went to pants there. Yeah. And they're going to get a million for, but in, he showed me some articles of the interview and all the players said, well, when, when the manager came in, it's all, he sold it to me. It's all I want to do. I want to play for the manager. How many times did we hear that in the summer? A player saying, I've come for the manager in the club. And it's always been Darren Moore's selling point for me. He's very good at convincing, making t- teams better and players better. If, if I'm Sheffield went through recruitment team, you're saying, where's the next Barry Bannon? Let's go find him. Because I think we kind of thought we had found him in Bayers. But I think injury, we still could have. It's just you've got to make sure. You've got to get these injuries. Because so, let's have a look. How, how old is Byers? Because I think Byers is, is he around 28? 26, I? I think. He might, is he younger than that? Because if 26, we don't really need to look probably immediately. I tell you what, who will be covering this topic in their solo episode when it's their members only solo episode yep. soon, it will be. Oh, yeah, he's, he's 26. Yeah, he's young. Yeah, if, if he can keep his injuries. The thing is, though, yeah. his, inju- his injuries haven't been like major muscles. They've been freak injuries. Like the no. one on the bottom of his foot was bad, the cut. I think he had that muscle injury when he first came in, and that was about it. But remember when we signed him, we said he had an injury record that wasn't great. But when he got fit again in that January last season, he was the player that just drove it because he started scoring these goals. I think he scored the most goals he's ever scored in a season. When Bayers is good, and this is a key point, get him on a new contract, please, soon. Yeah. I think. We've got a lot of midfielders and necessarily like right now, it's probably not a priority. No. You don't know what's going on with Fizz because uh, I, I don't, I don't think that's happening. I, I'm not, I'm not sure, but like we do need to start looking in that sort of mold for a creative midfielder that we can probably bring in under those. Do you know what? Bannon's still got another year or so here. Yeah. Learn off Barry Bannon as well. If we're going to keep them for. Could, could you technically say Rio Shipton could be the player to learn that mentor from? Maybe. We do have a good academy with some very good midfielders. So maybe the one there, but I wouldn't want to put all that pressure on an academy. Well, for, for ages, we thought it was Alex Hunt. Yeah. And then obviously that didn't work. That didn't pan out. So we'll yeah. see what happens. I don't think currently we have a problem in that midfield with the players we've no. got. We just need them back fit. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> can we move on now? <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> um, so, the League One review. A bit weird. Oh, 
Oxford beat Ipswich Town 2-1. Hang on, hang on. Before we go into this, so at the 75th minute, there was fog on the pitch, right? The referee went to both managers and said, even if I call it off now, the result will be the same. 1-1. Right? Yeah. Ipswich manager, at the end, then they both agreed, like, carry on, because Ipswich wanted to close the gap on us and fair play. The Ipswich manager at the end of the game said, well, it should have been called off, shouldn't it? And kind of thing. The Oxford manager, Carl Robinson, turned around and said, well, he turned around and said he wanted to carry on, so we carried on. It's not my fault he lost, kind of thing. He didn't say it in that sense, but it's like, you wanted to carry on. It, you could yeah. have got a point and had it. Exactly. Exactly. It's, uh, I, heard, I heard that, and it's just sour grapes, really, isn't yep. it? It's, it's now a seven-point gap not counting. between us and them. But there's plenty of matches to be played, so yep. let's not get carried away. Right, um, Bristol Rovers' Wickham was postponed. Forest Green lost to MK Dons. MK Dons won that one 2-1. That's Great big result, down MK. there, isn't it, really? Mm. Um, Barnsley beat Akron to Stanley 3-1. Plymouth beat Cheltenham 4-2, so Plymouth still winning. Portsmouth beat Exeter City 2-0. Derby County beat Bolton 2-1. Mm. A lot of people are saying keep an eye on Derby, but I don't think, I don't think I'm worried just yet. I think for me, keep an eye on Derby because if they get in the playoffs, they'll win it. Yeah, yeah, probably. They said that about Wednesday though, didn't they? Yeah, but then we went against Sunderland with a new manager bounce. Yeah. We obviously beat Fleetwood. Morecambe Port Vale was postponed. Shrewsbury beat Cambridge 5-1. Funny how Cambridge are the whipping boys again. Sorry. I know. Peterborough, Charlton postponed. Lincoln, Burton postponed. And that leaves Plymouth Argyle at the top of the table with 28 matches played and 61 points. Sheffield Wednesday in second with 27 matches played and 58 points. You know what that means? If we win the game in hand, we're top of the league. If we win tomorrow, we're top of the league on goal difference. Yep. The big thing here, we both... We've got Plymouth in it to play back to back, which I reckon whatever whatever result we get out of that, if you say I would love to get all six, let's just be honest, that's where my heart going. Get all six, get it done. But if we get four points out of that, that's a very good return. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I also, mean, I, ideally, you kind of go as long as we beat Ipswich. Yeah, because you we want to go for the top, but beating Ipswich would dent them. Yeah, but also, depending on what happens, if we're that Plymouth game, because they don't have a game until us. Yeah. So they've got all that time to train and everything else. The best four points for us in your scenario of four points, for me, I would say, is point at Plymouth. Uh, yeah. Point with Plymouth, beat Ipswich. Because yeah. that keeps us in both races. It does. Um, before we just move on, I just want to say a big shout out to Bristol Rovers players and staff. Uh, they all shade the head for Nick Anderson, who's currently going through uh, rare bone cancer. And they're oh, raising a lot of money for it. And I just thought, we talk about clubs being together. Oh, I did see that, yeah. About yeah. club being together and players looking after each other and fans looking after each other. And the fans are doing it well. There's a lot of, uh, I'm speaking to someone I know who said, you know, one of his female mates who shaved their head as well. And it's like, it's nice to see a community coming together for a common cause. And yeah. you just hope you get it better soon. Indeed. Very much so. <sighs> that all sucks, man, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's, um, so, making out the playoff spa- spaces is Ipswich Town in third, Derby County in fourth, Bolton in fifth, and Barnsley in sixth. The playoffs are starting to become a pack that are separating themselves yeah. a bit more. Um Barnsley are in sixth on 43 points and then Peterborough are in fit, in seventh on um, 38 points. So there's a five-point gap in the playoffs now as well. So there's that If you to look consider. at the bottom, well, I thought MK Dons were buried. They are going on a massive little resurgence. Yeah, they sure are. They're so like, oh, MK they Dons in 19th now. Point. Yeah, 19th now. They are only one point above safety. So it's still, they're still very much in it. Yep. Forest Green have played 27 matches. They've the got 21 difference? points. Minus 29. <laughs> they've got about as much. We've got as much as they've conceded. Mm, dear. Not good. 
No, our goal difference. Oh, goal difference. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Our goal difference is what so, they've conceded. I don't do math. You know this. No, our goal difference is their... No, yeah. I know. I also got that wrong. Our goal difference is their negative goal difference. Our positive is their negative. They have conceded 52 goals. However, they haven't conceded the most goals in the league. That's Burton. They've conceded 54. Burton have just scored more. Yeah. Be interesting how, this, how that te- bottom half go. You know, we've only conceded 18 goals. Yeah. You know, uh, if we get a clean sheet versus Cheltenham, we'll have either surpassed or equaled Kieran Wepper's Re- record of clean sheets. Quality that. That'd be good. We, um, it's just impressive to see that because the teams around Plymouth and Ipswich, 29 and 28 goals respectively, mm. we've shipped, we've, we've only conceded 18. So it shows about that defence. We were, we were awful at defending last season. Set pieces, give, throwing I games think away. I we only conceded three set pieces this year or something like that. There was a stat out today about it. Um, it it just shows you that Darren knew what needed to be fixed in the summer and went and fixed it. Yeah. Speaking of fixing things with Darren Moore, he might have fixed it to bring a... Uh, pl- uh, that was going somewhere, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> can't use that phrase anymore, can no, you? No, you can't. <laughs> Darren Moore! <laughs> Right, this is probably going to be a breakout, so I'll need to reset. We're keeping this in the long form podcast. (laughs) Darren Moore has spoke about how Michael Hector is training with Sheffield Wednesday. This is a story, isn't it? Yeah. Like I might even go back to that video we made. Was it like this summer or the summer before or something? Where he he was literally he wanted to sign. There was there was there was talks. It was going to happen. We had content ready. It was they one didn't of the happen. ones when, when they popped back up, I like, do I send him, say, push the button and put that video up? Press the button. Done it. <laughs> yeah, we finally, had, and then I'd have to actually figure out my hair would be different. I'd have a different <laughs> <laughs> level of facial hair. Um, I may even have yes. a coloured mohawk at that point. Darren Moore has confirmed that um, Michael Hector is training with us. We've not heard anything since then. No. But we know he's a free agent. We also know he hasn't played in quite a while. Mm. Mark, it's been I think, was his last competitive th- game for Fulham. I think it was the end of. I think he played in May, so it had been. It's March or May, but I think it was May. It's a lot so, of football not to play. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um. Let's just talk about the the, the top one here. Would you be happy about his return? Oh yeah, definitely. Mainly because it's a free agent. It, it's it very much a tremendous Lang situation we had last season. But you would rather had the same time scale that we did with Mendes Lang when he came in November, throw him in in January. But if Michael Hector kept himself fit like Darren Moore said in his press conference and he thinks he's there, why not? He's a free agent. We only have to pay wages. Yes, it could be one of those things he doesn't play play till March, but it could be that bit where he comes in where we know Michael Awickway is coming back from injury, and you mm-hmm. say, right, you come on for the next 60 so he doesn't run his legs into the ground. You know are I mean? you concerned about option. his fitness? Are you, are you obviously, uh, you've got to be concerned about his yeah. fitness. You've got to so. be, but if he can prove it, we, we all are concerned about uh, Lang fitness, and he did, he had games where he would come off, like mm-hmm. 60th minute, so if we could do the same for Michael Owitway, because he's not going to come back straight away. I still think if you get this, you still got to go get a number one as well, just in case. Uh, you love your centre backs. Number one. Another one. But then again, we only brought my, uh, Mark McGuinness in because Akin Famia was. Yeah, and he's Fam- done Fam- Fam- was um, injured and he's gone back to Cardiff. So technically, this is actually you one more than. One the other. The, this is one more than he was planning. Hmm. So, but I think we we bring Hector in. If he even shows a remnant of what form he showed for Wednesday the first time, yeah. the obviously the form is temporary, class is permanent. So I think if he's, 30. I think this could be a great move. I'll double check that. But like, just the class he has mm. on the ball, the comfort he looks on it. I just want if this does happen, I just want the announcement video to have Barry Bannon going. Are you going to come and play for us or what on Twitter? 
because Oto got such a rapport on Twitter and Instagram. I just want something yeah. of that kind of banter in the announcement video. You know what I mean? He's 30, so... Oh, he's got plenty plenty more to go. You'd give him a year with an option, wouldn't you? Yeah. Easily. And oh. Darren Moore does like experience. Or would he give him a short term with an option and then to extend it? So if he, do, if he does well this... This, uh, I think that's possibly what might happen. They'll give him I a short term deal. I think you give him a short term deal, and then you look at where you are in the summer. You want to make sure he doesn't pick up any major injuries, yeah. this because that but could bright you. Michael Hector in the championship will still be able to do it. Oh yeah, definitely. That's the thing. You are future proof in there. Yeah, and you would be. This is a great way to fill a fill, fill a hole in the fans' hearts left by Mark McGuinness. Yeah. He is filling. He is filling that gap. So, um, yeah. Do you think... I think he fits in the system quite well, a type of player like Michael Hector, because yeah. we didn't really... We tried to play this sort of system under Joss when he was here, but it was awful. It was woeful. It, it didn't, didn't work. work. You know, playing it out from the back, I think he's the kind of centre-back that would be quality for that. Yeah. But let's also remember... I offer since he's come back have been superb. I think this is just depth now. We just need that little bit of depth just in Yeah, case. that's that's worth mentioning. I offer's been I'm so happy, by the way, that I offer's picked it back oh, up yeah. again because he he got his he sort of like got his head down and just It re- makes you wonder about re- back, sorry. Mentally he wasn't right and he's just been like tucked to one side, you can do this. Like the mm. thing like with Dotdale putting up the po where he's hugging him going, you've got it. It makes me feel like there was a little bit of a, I'm not there and some of the lads have gone, come on, you've got this. Because I, got- feel, I feel a real togetherness with this squad. For, I don't know why, there's just the togetherness that we haven't seen in a while. If we bring Michael Hector in, we have got such good defense. Such good sense. Because we already have, we've got Michael Owekwe, who is, whenever I've watched him, he's, he's just... solid. Whenever you see him play, you're just like solid player. Yeah, just you always know that he's gonna. He, he's a he's a comfortable pair of boots. That's probably not a saying. That's um, a saying that's now going to be a saying. I like that. He's a comfortable <laughs> pair of boots. Um, Fami out from away from mm, Akin. Akin <laughs> was fantastic on his debut. Got injured. Fantastic. This um, superb. This week. There's yeah. just a calmness about when he All plays. the superlatives. Yeah. There's just a real calmness when he's on the he's ball. He's 23. He was a bargain as well at like 53k. It was 23. And then you've got... I offer obviously coming back into it. I'm just saying he is 23, isn't he? He's not... He's 24 now, sorry. He's, he was 23 when we signed he him. He was 23 when we signed him. But... And you've got Palmer who can play in that role, but the fact yep. that we've got him playing wing back we you can tell why we've only conceded 18 goals also can we just make a kind of thing we changed keepers halfway through the season yes and and it's it's worked it's not done anything (laughs) yeah would you and and you can't see any reason to get rid of Dawson no he's having a crack he playing with something that we've not seen him do in a Wednesday shirt and it's a smile on his face he's enjoying it you can tell but I think after a game when David Stockdale goes and gives him a big bear rug, you can tell it's like, I'm actually for appreciate and I'm actually wanted. And I think that's what he needed. He needed to go somewhere where he was wanted with Exeter and then come back and feel wanted again. I have a feeling Darren Moore's not the kind of person to say to a player, look, you go out on loan, you're not going to get back in. It's like, go show me that you can do this, come back and then get yeah. back in. Because Brennan's having an excellent season at Swindon. We may have another centre-back there. Even if we have to send him out on loan next season to leave one, we've got one there who's doing well. This is a really nice time to be a Wednesday. I'm just... Literally, like, whenever something... like There doesn't, there doesn't need to be any drama in this fan base at the minute. We'll yeah. find a way, somehow. There always oh, yeah, is. We but, like, grinding out results when you're not playing amazingly, when you're getting injuries to key players... Please get promoted, lads, because <laughs> that would just be... I on the cake. Well, it needs to be done, doesn't it? But, like, I, I just have, all the I positivity. Have, I have one issue, right? What happens in Sheffield City Centre if both clubs go up? 
Could they? Like, I don't think we need to go mental no, no, for getting no, promoted no, no. from but League One. Still, they normally do a parade and do a going to City Hall. We did it last time. <laughs> Different days. Different I'm days. Dreading. A lot cleaned up. But um, yeah, I think if we. If we're champions, that's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. I would love to see That'd that. Be nice. <laughs> I've never seen it. No, nope, neither have I. And you're really old, so. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, uh, by the way, this is a topic about Hector. Hopefully, yeah. Hector does <laughs> come back to Sheffield Wednesday. I could, I could um, see him slotting in that back line if he can get his fitness up. And uh, I trust if Darren thinks he's fit enough to play and be in the squad and sign for us, I fully trust him. Okay, this headline's from the star. Sheffield Wednesday's Luke Manali snag as Owls battle it out for the Burnley loan transfer. Fur. It was revealed earlier this month that 23-year-old was one of the Owls' defensive targets as they sought to bring in a new central defender this month. And a few days ago, the star was informed that an inquiry had been made to Burnley in regards to taking him on loan. Now, with the transfer window heating up, it is thought that window faced competition from at least three teams in the championship. And indications are that, as things stand, Vincent Company and the Clarets would prefer him in the second tier rather than the third. Talks between Darren Moore and relevant parties are thought to have taken place, however, with several clubs keen on the defender. It remains to be seen where he'll end up by the time the transfer slams shut at the end of the month. I'm going to end that uh, article there. So there's, 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 there's some, you know, questions about whether he he could drop this far, whether Vincent mm. Company would want him to come here. But I think personally, you've got to actually consider, which has not been said here, the fact that it's going to be really good for a player to play at a club competing at the top end of a division, even if it's just that one step well, below one with that expectation. Linked a Blackpool. Right. Do you want him to go and have a relegation battle or do you want him to go have that kind of That's go exactly up and it. enjoy it? It's it's one of those interesting things where I'd Sorry, like, Mark. <laughs> I'd like to see this happen, but at the same time I understand what they, they do because he's already played in League One last season with Oxford, so he knows it. They need him to have a bit more championship at fear because them going up, and I'm saying them going up because they're going up, they're probably going to loan him back out to the championship next season. Because we could have it where hey, can we have him for this part of the League One and then say, he had a really good spell here with us for the last six months coming in for the rest of the season on loan next year, if we need him. Yeah, I think he's, that, he's definitely that position we need because we need, you know. We need to think about, like I said, in the summer. <laughs> well, this is the thing I was, I've, I've had to second guess myself here because I'm like, I've just said Hector would probably be enough. And it I don't depends be. if we can get Hector. To, it's not about agreeing a deal if Darren Moore can see he can stay fit. The last thing you want to do is take a player who's not going to fit. The issue we had last season, we brought in Jordan Story, worked superbly, but we brought in Harley Dean, came here, never had an injury, ever, in his career. Welcome to Hillsborough. Welcome to middle of training ground. Get injured. And we had that whole situation. Funny, though, how we're looking at centre-backs again, because it's the same thing we did last sub, uh, January. Yeah. But I'd rather look at centre-backs while we've had a great defence oh, yeah. rather than going, help! <laughs> yes. It's interesting, because one of the topics that was put in here about Luke Manali, is Sheffield Wednesday becoming a daycare to improve players and only get them recalled? <laughs> Can you tell so has been having more of an influence yeah. on this since the uh, episode 100? <laughs> I saw that earlier, that made me laugh. <laughs> it's a good analogy, isn't it? It is, it is. It's like, Darren, can you babysit our player for us? <sighs> That's what loans are for, though. That is but what loans are for. But not forget, in the middle of a season. But people also forget, he's an ex-loan manager. That was his yeah. job. So he knows what he's doing. So it's like when you had the situation with uh, Steve Cooper at Forest, like, complaining. Darren might have just said, you do realize like, we're allowed to do this, right? If it don't work, I understand it, but it didn't work. Yeah. I'll take him. Yep. You want about 56 centre-backs at the club anyway, so just take yeah, them all. It's not, it's not going the same way I play FIFA career mode, just put it that way. I forget about centre-backs and then I have issues. Oh my God, the next story is about another centre-back. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you like centre backs? We've already talked about the centre back as well, but it's still circulating that Aidan Flint might still be on the cards. But it looks like he might be leaving for Derby. Yes. So it's worth us mentioning an update there. We are linked, but he is also linked with Blackpool yeah. and Derby. Also, so, just a quick one. What are your thoughts? I know you probably haven't got any, but what are your thoughts on Mick McCarthy getting the Blackpool job? Because you've seen weird him coming back into management all of a sudden, but he's the kind of bloke who could probably keep them up. Well, I think that's exactly why he's done it. He fancies it. Mm. I think when you come out of the game and you might get bored, it's like the talks about Warnock coming back for certain No, Warnock challenges. doesn't come back because he's bored. Warnock comes back because his wife makes yeah, him go get yeah, work. Yeah, I remember <laughs> you mentioning that, but like the... You would get it, though, if it's your life. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'll just do it again. I'll go back in. I, I get like, you know, if there's something you're good at, like, oh, I'll just do that. Yeah. I miss doing that. I just always so. find it funny when people link him to us when we've got manager jobs or Pierce. It's like, he said in interviews he won't manage up here. Um, uh, he, he was keen on the job once, I remember. Once. I just remember it not lining up. Yeah. I specifically remember that. I can't remember exactly when, but it was in my We've time had a of lot of manager changes, let's Wednesday. be honest. Yeah. Some positive news, even more positive news. Marvin Johnson's won the PFA Award um, League One Fans Player of the Month Award for December. This is from the Wednesday website. The winger was victorious in the public vote, claiming the prestigious prize following an impressive run of form for Wednesday. Johnson has become a regular figure for Darren Mills' side throughout the season, contributing to our current unbeaten league run of 14 games. The 32-year-old's successful December was highlighted most during our 2-1 away over Fleetwood on Boxing Day, with Johnson providing the assist for George Byers equaliser before netting the winner for Wednesday. Congratulations, Marvin. So nice, Great it's, actually, it's actually a nice trophy he gets as well, which I was really impressed with. It's so weird how he's just come from the player. Like, why did we sign him like earlier yeah. last season to the end of last season? Like, what a fantastic, most improved player to this player just not dropping this season, just keeping going. Okay, should we talk about a controversial topic? Go on. The booing of the knee. I think we've got to talk about it because it was going round a lot. Could we just not do it? No yeah. matter what your thoughts are on it, let's not boo somebody else. We just don't need to boo. We've it, sort of said this, just silently disagree. All it right. It doesn't look good when. I'm, I try not to get into the debate yeah. about it now because it's one of those things like, oh, you have the same debate every single time. I just, I'm just like, we don't At need the end to of boo. Day, the clubs have agreed to do it, and each club has said they'll do it, then leave it to it. It's the club decision. They've been given games that they can do it on. Let them do it. Yep. It's not hurting anyone it's not causing an issue it's literally they want to do it it's 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 very difficult to talk about this subject considering the position when they're in in terms of how many black players we have in this team at the color of our coach is a black man who very openly said when we were first doing it it's important to do it but when we stopped it said it kind of lost its thing but i it's okay to do it now and again. You know what I mean? It's such a hard subject to talk about, but then do it. It's like, just don't, there's no need. He's also asked us not to boo as our manager. Like, we don't need to do it. Yeah. You know, let's just, let's not try and look for the, we're not trying to look for the negative here. You know, we're not trying to like pull some, oh, we need to do, we, I just think we need to just, just don't boo. Yeah. There's no need. Just, just if you want to silently disagree, right, and just like, stand let's there. Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. If there's a minute of silence, you wouldn't make any noise mm-hmm. at all. Or if there was applause, mm-hmm. you would clap for that minute yep. applause. Treat it the same way. Yeah, I think you should, because yeah, there's a lot you can. You, there's a lot you can anger when you talk about this. But can you imagine how angry certain people would be if you booed a minute silence because you necessarily were on a different you know, a different side during that time or you weren't, you, you we don't saw, agree with that. There is people year. that don't agree with that and it's the same way. We saw it last year at a Forest game. There was a minute of silence and a lad started making noise and like people were shouting and the mother shouted, he's autistic, he doesn't understand it mm. for him. So it kind of, un- people then start to like understand it. 
But like, if you go to a game and there's a minute silent and you, with the, you have some people coming in late and you can hear them like talking, you'll get a section of people go, shut up. Yeah. Can you not see we're not saying anything? It's, I just think it's just all about, we, we can hold ourselves better than that as a yeah. fan base. I'd like to think. Yeah. I do still like, I, there's still there's walks in every life and every fan base. The one thing you you've got with having a big fan base like ours is there's all sorts of characters in it. So, well, I think I think we're all Wednesday, aren't we? It needs to be more of a case of let's all just sort of like take an agreement to be civil has... with each other and respect everybody's views. But we don't need whole... to boo, including that. Yeah, and on that whole we're Wednesday, aren't we? Where's it gone? It kind of disappeared. Hmm. Yeah, I've, I, there has been times that's coming. If, if when you put yourself out there as well, mm. that's definitely a case of uh, you do you do feel that sometimes because it is just a case of like, okay, you can disagree with something, but we are still like we're on the same side here overall. I can, yeah. you know, so yeah, we do need to remember that sometimes. I think. Yeah. Okay, when's his next match? Cheltenham. <sighs> it's a big one. Dexterity watch. If you are watching this after Tuesday, you've missed it. Where were you? But um, how are you feeling about this one? They are, I've got, I will finish the stats before that. I should have asked you afterwards. <laughs> Their record is 8-4-14. They've got 28 points. They're averaging one one goal at one one point a game pretty much. So the home record is 5-1-6, 16 points. Their away record is 3-3-8, 12 points. So the home record is slightly better and that's obviously where they we play them. They scored 23 goals this season conceding 34 with a difference of minus 11. Their last match was a loss to Plymouth, who were our um, league title rivals and promotion rivals. So I would feel like it's quite important to beat the 18th place side in League One. Your thoughts? This is one where you actually look at the stat from the Plymouth game. They were actually very good and actually caused them a lot of problems. So we have to be a little bit careful. We know about one danger man already, which is Alfie May. He came to Hill for last season. Gindle's good. We managed to sing. These are the kind of games where the lads don't need to look at tables. They don't need to look at social media. They just need to get the job done. Get the job done, get out of town, go home. And don't even bother about what it means. A title's not run at one in January, one in May. We got the opportunity to just do what we're doing. One thing that we had last season from Lee Gregory's mouth was we were looking over our shoulders at other people. We're not doing that this season so far. We just keep doing what we're doing, play our game, and we should come out of there with three points. But let's just remember, 18 points, uh, 16 points at home said they are a good home team and we'll get the fans behind them. So let's just be smart. Let's not go overboard as well if the result isn't right. Let's just, it football, it happens. We just got to do our own game and concentrate on us. And I don't care what the ramifications are. Like it'll go to like the Plymouth game and it'll make that Plymouth game even more feisty. But I don't think Darren Moore or the players will be looking at it that way because they know nothing won then. We just got to play our game and just try and get all three points. Yeah, I can't say it any better than that. I'm excited to watch it. So oh, yeah. we'll 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 see what happens, and uh, I like I like watching it. I'm with the looking forward as to well. watching the watch along as well because in the past I've got some very good moments from you when it's been on the soundboard. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be running on very little sleep as well, so that'll be a laugh. Yeah, I forgot to because we were gonna talk about this at the top, but we'll talk yes. about it now rather than me edit it back in because I want it. It needs to be. It needs, I, to it needs to either be at the top or here. What? Are you doing taking a car and burning it out in a community area that is the massive days. self-destruction of a community space for what? A laugh? Mm. So if you've missed it, there's a there's a there's a community space that's that's widely used. Not even that old. Let's just put it that way. The lads were training on it last week. And a car, basically, we assume it's probably 
you Bandit. you I, I, you, you don't we well, can we can't we can't assume no. who's done it. Um, you are, I think the assumption often goes this will be young people who've done something, but you never you never know. Do no. you know? Um, so it's a case of they've gone there, messed about, burnt a car out on there. The apparently it's going to be very six expensive figures. to fix it. It's six figures to fix it because it's like the three G pitch and stuff, and it's not that long since it's been opened. This was one thing that I was really happy that we were doing. Where we spoke about it when the initial plan got done. We said this is something we should be doing, more things. The Sheffield went to ladies team played there the day this happened, this happened in the evening. Yeah. This our setup for Thursday is worth over a million quid. And we've done this to help the community and make it better for all ages, all races, all creeds, all genders to go have fun. There's going to be a lot of kids who now can't play their games and the lady team who can't play there because this has happened. This was a place where they didn't have to keep abandoning games. They could go, right, this pitch is a bit bad. We can play here instead. This is stupid. The one thing I love, though, is both sides of the city, Owl or Blade, have all gone. What are you doing? I've seen a lot of that on Twitter of people saying, I'm a Blade, but this is stupid. I just honestly, like, in times like this, I just... I don't get it. So I think... a quote from Mark, Mark of Bramall, Bramall, who's the head of the community bureau, which said, it's his awful. The facility has been so well received opening and we had Sheffield Wednesday's lady playing on it. It's a lot, lots of members of the community, kids and otherwise. So for someone to break in, drive a car into the middle of a pit, set it alight is abhorrent. We'll now be out of action for weeks. It be repaired and only people losing out are those who want to use it. This is something I was so happy about when we opened it because it. one thing we've had recently is that sometimes it doesn't feel like we give back to the community. It felt like we're giving back something to the community that can be used. And if you've gone on because you've gone, oh, there's a Wendy logo, I'm a blade, I'll do it. You're stupid. If you've gone on because of that, it's no need for it. At the end of the day, you'll, the damage it causes and the upheaval it's now going to take for lots of other programs now. Like, there's going to be probably things where we wanted to probably keep Middlewood pitch because if this community program was helping Middlewood because we wouldn't have to, tr- people wouldn't have to train on Middlewood so it wouldn't get a damage and we wouldn't I have ju- to go drain on the pitch. We, there's some people who just thrive off this stuff. Yeah. Okay. The reason I want to draw attention to it is because if you've heard anything, just grass them up. All right. Don't care if they're your mates. Don't care if oh, they're only your, uh, or they might not be. Could be old people that are on the drink. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just grass them up. Get it actually some respon- uh, responsibility for this because people, people have got to realise like actions like this have consequences and they should have consequences because you've now taken away something that's, that's used by a lot of people and that's going to cost money. And time to fix, and it's pathetic, really. You know what the really worst part is? Unveiled 23rd of December. Yeah, you know, there's a big saying, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Genuinely, if you think about how much nicer parts of this country could be if people just respected things. I remember, like, they were building children's centres near me. And when they were building, they were, these are spaces for children. And when they were, like, in their building stage, people would just go and set them on fire. Mm. And they'd have to burn them all down and build again. This was for free, like, early years and free childcare for children. Yeah, People are just like that. Some people. It just... Why don't you all just stay at home and play video games? Stop yeah. going out. Stop socialising. If it involves arson. There you go. Yep. Dexterity box, top tip. How do you want to end this episode? Because that's the end of the Talking Wednesday um, podcast. Should we try and bring it round? <laughs> there are people who want to do things like this and wreck people's enjoyment. And... If you let them do that, they win. But if we can rally around the community, 
bring it back together, manage to get things back to the thing, and remember that the people who do these things are the kind of thing that we don't want to be talking about, but we have to. But the community, we can be better by going, you're not touching our community faith, that's ours. So let's rally around as a community as the thing goes, we're all Wednesday, aren't we? And rally together and just support one another while they get this fixed. And if you can help in any way, if there's any GoFundMe thing, if they do something like that, let us know. We will put it in the show. And anything like that we can do to try and help, we will do. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. But um, all of that in mind, be good to people. Have a lovely week. And we will catch you in the next episode of Talking Wednesday. See ya.